Well, hello everyone and welcome. As Cindy mentioned, my name is Matt Piper and I'm the Global Industry Director for Utilities, Water and AEC at Esri. And for those that are not aware, most of my professional engineering life was spent working in asset management at a utility. And it's something that I'm quite passionate about. So CityWorks is a fantastic partner of Esri. And this has been a really great session for me, listening to all the customer success stories and hearing what the customers have created using Esri and CityWorks. And I certainly do appreciate the opportunity to, to present. And I'm excited to finish out the day with a presentation on geo-enabling asset management with a modern GIS. So thank you all for staying with us. I'm going to start the presentation by looking at some of the foundations of asset management. In its simplest definition from ISO 55000, asset management is the coordinated activity of an organization to realize value of its assets over its life cycle. And if we look at the life cycle from this definition, we see it begins with identifying a need, then planning to meet that need, acquiring the assets, then establishing maintenance strategies and programs to determine how the asset will be operated and maintained throughout its useful life before finally being disposed of at its end of life. The other component in that definition was about realizing the value of the asset. So the objective of asset management is to maximize the performance of the assets while minimizing risk and doing this within existing resource and cost constraints. And by doing so, this increases things like the utilization of the asset and the resilience. And as a result, it improves the value of the asset and reduces the total cost of ownership. Now, if you're working in asset management, you've no doubt been working on improving your data quality. It is something that it never goes away and it's something that everyone is always working on. And capturing some of the foundational data points which are necessary to support your asset management strategies, it's quite simple to start looking at it that you just want to know how many assets you have or even what condition are they in. But when you think of asset management, you may not immediately be thinking of location. However, I will challenge you that location is core to many workflow scenarios and it assists in better decision making. You just may not have realized it yet. So let's start with those basics I just covered. So you know how many assets you own, but do you know where they are? And during scenarios of corrective or forced work, let's say, for example, if there is a water main break, the first question that is always asked is, where did the fault occur? Followed by, where are the nearest isolation valves? And if you understand the condition, you may look to see trends, in which case you'd like to know, where is your network vulnerable? and compare this to both where historical failures have occurred or where future fails of, uh, failures are forecasted. And if we focus in on the schedule and dispatch workflows, it's important to understand that where your work is located and where the nearest crews may be, as this can optimize the work plans and it also assists in restoring supply faster. You see, the power of location is about understanding the where. And you're already thinking spatial in many of these workflows, and there's a really good reason for it, because every asset has a location and every location has a story to tell. And this is something we're gonna explore a bit more in this presentation, because this is where GIS plays such a critical role. A modern GIS is not just the design or mapping of the water network. A modern GIS is the platform which provides a process and a framework to support your business workflows, and it supports these best practices for asset management. GIS provides the capabilities to measure and capture data about your assets. It visualizes and maps the location and network connections. It provides advanced analysis and modeling, and it is a complete planning and design solution that it assists with decision-making, which ultimately leads to action. When we apply these concepts into asset management directly, we see this in three main areas that we focus on for geo-enabling asset management. The first is data management, which is bringing together all the data sources which are managing the network model and capturing and maintaining the physical asset data. It's performance assessment, 
which provides the insights and the advanced analytics into past, present and future performance of the assets and the system as a whole. And it's the life cycle optimization, which is how we optimize the entire life cycle by centering it around location. So as many users in the GIS community know, Esri has released the most advanced network management capability in the world, and it's known as the ArcGIS Utility Network. This advanced network modeling capability was purposely built to manage and capture assets and network information for a modern water network, allowing the modeling of the complete water network from the source to the consumer and bringing together domains from the water utilities, the water resources, and the water stormwater and other industry data models all together. It really was engineered to solve many of the current issues that are facing your organizations, but it was also designed in a way that is scalable and performant to meet the challenges of the future. So you look at this diagram, you can think of it really in three main fundamental areas. The utility network is about advanced network modeling capabilities. It's about state-of-the-art visualizations and analytics, and it's actually the underlying system architecture and security that it provides. And together, these form the foundations of what we call a modern GIS that stores information, uncovers business intelligence, and communicates the role-based information to all of the stakeholders in your organization. Another key aspect of data management is around capturing and maintaining asset information. The deployment of mobility solutions is one of the fastest use cases for water organizations. With the majority of the workforce working out in the field, it provides a significant opportunity to improve efficiency, data capture, and coordinated operations. And from my experience, nothing improves the data quality in the back office faster than putting the information in the hands of the users who are performing the work. So a modern GIS takes the network and the physical asset data to these end users out in the field, and it supports their business workflows. And it does this with additional capabilities as well, which are around the scheduling, routing optimization, navigation, and tracking. One of the key differentiators between a true platform solution and a point-to-point -point custom or bespoke solution is how the platform is designed to work in collaboration with other enterprise solutions or systems. Having a complete interconnected enterprise solution reduces your overall technical debt. It reduces legacy integrations and moves your organization forward with the ability to stay on commercial off-the-shelf upgrade paths. As you can see from this diagram, the ArcGIS geospatial infrastructure is architected with integrations to many leading software vendors to allow seamless bi-directional communication and sharing of this information. And as almost all information in your organization has a spatial component, GIX, GIS sorry, acts as that common reference system to bring all these systems together. It integrates with many vendors and provides visualizations and analytics of your asset management data with your CRM data, with your works management and your finance solutions. This removes duplication of data, it creates that single source of the truth and it reduces information latency. I just stepped through quite a few of the examples about how a modern GIS improves your organization's data management through better network management and modeling, through field deployments and integration into these other systems. And from my experience, to perform asset management in your organization, you really need to think of your data as an asset and you need to invest in it. So you need solutions in place that support it. Now that we've covered the tools and capabilities to support the data management in your organization, the next area I'm going to focus in on is about performance assessment and how GIS is used to gain insights and understanding. Some of the examples of applications of this include visualizing your assets by location, but also looking at the attributes like age, the material and the diameter as it relates to the distribution and transmission networks. It's about applying trends for exploratory analysis to better understand usage and applying this over time, as shown here with analyzing customer excessive water usage. Then there is the tracking of the performance, the failures and the condition of your assets. Here we can see break counts as it relates to the network segment, but this data is also analyzed based on the asset attributes 
again, to better understand whether more failures are occurring based on material or diameter of the pipes. And at the bottom, we can see how we can bring in some of the other information from systems such as your CRM to extend the analytics for things like planning and forecasting for better understanding the customer demographics, the population growth, because all these things can have an impact on how you plan your network for capacity and capital programs of work. These are just a few of the examples, but we have many customers, as you saw today, working with Esri and CityWorks that are using these techniques for empowering asset managers with insights for things like uh, analyzing water loss, performing main break analysis based on failure rates, uh, the pressure and corrosion of the pipes, tracking water quality across your network, and even identifying things like dead meters out in your network. Another dimension of GIS that's rapidly changing is consuming real-time information and creating business value to support this decision making. This is all about integrating sensors across your network and enabling the Internet of Things to be used in conjunction with your GIS system. This is all about being able to consume real-time information and then use it to support business workflows and then visualize this information in easy-to-use dashboards. Being able to consume real-time information enhances an organization's situation awareness. Crews can now manage events, retracing the current network as it appears in the current operating state, and everyone can view real-time water outages. Users can see their work plans and understand where staff are located in context to the work or how other information feeds like traffic or even weather may be impacting their current work plans. Esri has been supporting this capability now for many years, but we are excited to announce just recently a new capability called ArcGIS Velocity. This is something to watch out for because this is a completely cloud-based solution where you can analyze your streaming data of maps and dashboards and identify temporal patterns and extract location and business talents. Intelligence for big data, for real-time data, and to do high-level performance scaling analytics. Another exciting trend that we see in the water utilities is the use of AI machine learning to better understand and predict your asset values and begin to forecast these network impacts. Water utilities are training models to extract information automatically and then applying these algorithms to better determine future outcomes. This information can be digitized, it can be entered, or it can be captured through things like imagery and LiDAR, and it's advancing the capabilities and workflows for mixed reality and AR and VR applications which is really quite exciting. See, ArcGIS is a complete platform, as we said, for managing and applying 3D data. Its 3D capabilities now seamlessly flow across the entire ArcGIS platform, from the desktop to the web and to the applications. Today, you can work with a variety of 3D data sets, including point clouds, LiDAR, BIM and 3D. In the water industry, we're actually seeing significant increase of 3D working in facilities and plants, which is really opening up many users' eyes to what is possible. And we're seeing amazing work to create stunning 3D plant models and even connecting things like your 3D features with SCADA and other real-time systems, which are really exciting as many utilities move to create what they're looking for as these digital twins of their assets and of the network in context to the natural and the built environment. So asset management in a modern utility is significantly more involved than I think it has been in previous years. And it can be a little bit concerning or overwhelming with the amount of information sets you need to manage now to make a more informed decision. And understanding an asset life cycle requires a holistic approach. It's not just about managing the age of the assets based upon their nameplates. It's not just about knowing how many assets you have or the number of failures that have occurred. To optimize an asset throughout its life cycle requires many data inputs, and they need to be brought together in a way that creates a complete 360 degree view of that asset, which is centered around location. Let me take you through a simple little workflow just to step you through what I'm talking about here. In your asset management system, you most likely have been capturing attributes on your assets that relate to condition. Uh, you're picking up historical data and you're capturing all the nameplate attributes of your, your data sets to, to manage the age. And from this data, 
you may be able to derive a health index of that asset, which ultimately helps you move potentially from performing time-based maintenance to more of the more strategic condition-based maintenance. However, if you want to transition past condition-based maintenance into reliability center maintenance, you need to begin to understand failure rates and criticality of the network. But so much of these decisions depend upon where the asset is located. Asset failures can depend on things like soil type, proximity to the coastline, or even if you're in an area where it's prone to other natural disasters, like things like earthquakes. So to understand the performance and the risk, you really need to understand the importance of location. So by understanding this, asset management strategies can transition into the decision-making analytics through insights or automation with some of the AI machine learning that we spoke about, which begin to optimize these asset strategies, which drive your capital refurbishment and replacement programs, it drives your plan maintenance and your operational plans. So creating that holistic asset lifecycle strategy is centered around the value of location. Let's look at this concept across the water network for water utilities, wastewater, and the stormwater networks. You can see here that the GIS is modeling the entire network. This is one of the business values of the utility network. It, it manages the model of the network from the source to the production, through distribution, and eventually to the consumption by the customer. It is also managing the interconnection and relationships to the wastewater and stormwater networks for the collection, treatment, and all the way back to the holding basins. But as you can see, everything in this diagram is spatial. And through location, we, get, get, we can begin to bring all this information back by sensors or capture this data out in the field, bringing it back to the office, creating what we call that intelligent water system. GIS is what connects the physical assets to the network. It connects the field to the office and it connects your information to the other corporate systems. So we began today's presentation with a mission to help you understand the power of location in geo-enabling asset management with a modern GIS. So I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and have a better understanding how a modern GIS is the enabling technology for your organization to achieve its digital transformation by geo-enabling your asset management solutions. And with that, I believe, Cindy, we are pretty much out of time. So I want to thank you, everyone, again for your time, and I'm going to hand it back to Cindy. Thank you.